dividing by a decimal. We have two strategies that we're going to use, and the first one is a number line. So our problem is 1 and 6 tenths divided by 0 and 2 tenths. And so because we're dividing by a decimal, our regular division strategy and algorithm will not work. So the first thing that I'm going to do is mark the point on the line represented by the dividend. The dividend is our larger number that we are dividing. So that is 1 and 6 tenths. Well, here's 1. I need 6 tenths more. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm marking where the dividend is on the number line. And this is my 1 and 6 tenths. Next, I'm going to box in the space from 0 up until this point. So this is showing me how much I have to be divided. So all of this that I boxed in is the 1 and 6 tenths. Now I need to divide it into 2 tenths. I'm going to cut the spaces, or this space, into pieces that are 2 tenths each. So starting at 0, I'm going to count over 2 tenths. 1, 2, and I'm going to draw a line. 1, 2, each of those was a tenth, that's why I'm counting. 1, 2, 1, 2, and I continue to do this until I can't make any more. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and so there, the line is already there. So now each of these pieces that I've cut that big box in two is 2 tenths large. And so my quotient is the number of pieces that I've created. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 1 and 6 tenths divided by 0 and 2 tenths is 8. Our next strategy is going to be to use multiplication to help us solve because multiplication and division are opposites. And there's something that we already know about multiplication that's going to help us. So the problem is 2 and 7 tenths divided by 0 and 3 tenths. Could use a number line just like we did a moment ago, but this strategy also works. What I'm going to do is, and I've already done, is rewrite the problem as a multiplication problem. We said that they multiplication and division are inverse or opposite operations. And so if I start at the back of this problem. Andrea and Carrington, you have a column line one. Andrea Carrington, line one. And say something times 0 and 3 tenths equals 2 and 7 tenths. Then this is the, kind of like fact families, how we used to be able to rewrite problems. This is a multiplication that will help me find the answer to that division problem. So now what I'm thinking is what times 0 and 3 tenths is going to equal 2 and 7 tenths? And I'm going to temporarily ignore the decimal and determine what times 3 could make 27, because we've talked about in a previous video how multiplying the same digits will give us the same answer, just maybe we need a decimal in there. So what times 3 is 27? Well, that's 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, now I need to decide if I need a decimal in my answer. Again, in a previous video we talked about if the number of digits after a decimal in a multiplication problem, there's one, have to match the number of digits after the answer of a multiplication problem. And so there's one there because of this one digit after the decimal in the problem. And so I don't need any other digits after a decimal, so this 9 does not need a decimal. Number 2, though, is going to be a little bit different. Let's look. My problem was 0 and 16 hundredths divided by 0 and 2 tenths. Again, first step is to rewrite it, and I'm working my way from the back. Something times 0 and 2 tenths equals this 0 and 16 hundredths. So, ignore the decimal. Something times 2 is going to be 16. Well, that's 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Now, do I need a decimal? Well, I have one digit after the decimal in the problem, but over here, there are two digits after the decimal in the answer. 
And so that tells me that this 8 needs to be behind a decimal, which means that it wasn't whole number 8. It's really 0 and 8 tenths times 0 and 2 tenths would make this 0 and 16 hundredths, because now I have two digits after the decimal in the problem, which is what I had in my answer. So my quotient up here, 0 and 16 hundredths divided by 0 and 2 tenths, is 0 and 8 tenths. I would like for you to use this number line to solve this problem and then multiplication to help you solve this one. Please do this in your math journal.